Hello, everybody. You know, all right. As a Christian, like I'm called to share the gospel with people, the gospel of Jesus Christ. The gospel means the good news, the good news that that Jesus Christ is alive, he lives, and that he God sent himself down in a human form to identify with us to go through the things we go through as human beings and um and then with the intention like God purposely God sent Jesus down to uh pay the price for our sins now our sins were our sins sins are our the bad things that we do okay <clears throat> and as a christian i believe that god sent his son his only son his only begotten son and that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life and that's john 3 16 and that's in the bible if you don't know and like the thing is you know it's already like i'm just being real right now i'm just being real because i'm finding it very difficult i'm finding it very difficult lately to share the gospel not only with non-believers but even with believers like not only as a sister in christ am i Am I, um, and I'm, and then you're supposed to, God says he commands us to be baptized. Jesus was telling, uh, God, I always get this name confused. Uh, he was telling, uh. Oh man, and I just was, he was telling somebody that in the Bible, it was a, a, one of the church leaders, he was having a conversation with him and he was telling him, uh, you can't receive the kingdom of heaven. You wouldn't even believe the things of the kingdom of heaven if you don't, if you're not born again. And he, and he, and he said, well, Lord, how how rabbi actually because rabbi means teacher he's like rabbi how is it that a man is to be born again like how are you born again and he's and jesus he's like is it possible that a man could go into the mother's womb and be born again and jesus replied no it's not another natural birth but born in the spirit because if you cannot and he's like, you're a teacher and you do not know these things. How is it that you not, do not know these things? Because if we're not born in the spirit, we cannot see the things in the spirit that God, the, the things of heaven. And then Jesus said, how is it that if you cannot believe the things of earthly things that I reveal to you, how would you believe then of heavenly things? Think about that. So by my kids are arguing in the background. Excuse the noise, please. So, how are we supposed to believe? Is now, if I come to an unbeliever, and then and then that's like the beautiful thing. What I've noticed is people that are not not that that don't believe in God, like they just for real they don't even believe in God. But I tell them of miracles and stuff that God has done in my life, and they listen and they're like, really. But then there's proof, there's the evidence. I have evidence of the things that God has done for me in my life. Okay, but then you tell a believer, even a believer, you tell a believer, not every non-believer believes or starts to believe, but it at least, and they're more like, they receive it more like, like really? Like they think about it because they wonder about it. People that have never experienced God uh, where they're aware of it because I'm sure they've 
experienced God in some way, shape, or form as their creator. Because God created the heavens and the earth. He created people. He is the creator and founder of the universe. Okay? And his spirit, his Holy Spirit, he's holy. He's a holy God. He's a good God. And his spirit dwells among the earth. Um, I was actually reading that. It says right here. That's so weird. Oh, I actually changed the page, but I, I did read it. It said God made the earth. Did I flip the page? Uh, no, but anyways. Um, it's in the, it, I was reading the Psalms earlier. But I just, like, for my brothers and sisters out there, like, as a Christian, I'm very devoted. I'm very, like, I'm... I'm all in for the Lord Jesus Christ and I want to spread the gospel with everybody who's willing to listen with my brothers and sisters in Christ. It's like that becomes a bubble, like a safety zone, like where you would think, hush, where you would think that amongst, as a Christian, among my fellow Christians, Christian brothers and sisters in Christ, that they would understand me. To some degree, and to some degree they do, but really, a lot of them don't. Like, so many people that claim to be Christians aren't even really, they there's, were supposed to be believers of Jesus Christ and of the gospel, and they don't even really believe. They don't even really, with their whole heart, believe. And that's the scary part, and, and where God calls his laborers in to do the work. Like, keep... That's why there's leaders in the church and stuff like that. Like people that God anoints their lives and brings them to a point. He humbles them. He gets them. He strips everything away from their lives to get them to the point where it's just you and him alone. And so that he can use you and speak into your life and speak to you and you're paying attention. And then those people who come into agreement with the Lord after the end, of course, they at some point in their life say, God, use me. And then God chooses them. Many are called, but few are chosen. Okay, that means many are called. Many are called and they'll show up. People will show up like, oh, well, use me, Lord. But God will only choose the ones with a good heart. The ones that are really, um, that are really believing him. Unbelief is the people's greatest sin, is unbelief like why why do christians walk around moping and sad and living their lives miserable when they are believers and it's not always easy to remember who you are as a christian and that you walk by faith and not by sight and that you walk you have Jesus Christ with you and the word of God sometimes and a lot of it's a spiritual battle and a lot of it is continuing conti it's a, a battle of the mind it's continually checking yourself checking yourself like you have to like you really are a soldier you need to you become a soldier for real for real as a Christian you really become a soldier of the body of Christ you become you, re, you be, as a member of the body of Christ, as a member of the body of Christ, you become a soldier. It becomes work. Your beliefs become work, okay? Work for the kingdom of God. And not that you're accepted by your works, but you need to do your work for the kingdom because faith without works is dead, okay? You're not justified by your works because by grace, through faith, we are saved, okay? And you've been redeemed and God accepts you. But you're, you're supposed to be doing your work for the kingdom, okay? Because you are God's servant. You're not God's slave, okay? Because you do have a choice. You choose to surrender your life and give God your all for real with all your heart and all your mind and all your soul and all your strength or not. Simple as that. God doesn't, he doesn't even want you. He's not going to force you to want him. He could, he could change, God could do what he wants when he wants. And I know that 
for a fact, 100%, without a doubt, because I, because he's God and I know he's God and I, I've experienced God and through experience is how you get to know God. Through a relationship, through your experiences, your experiences in life become a relationship with God as you seek him because of your experiences, depending what you're experiencing. And most of us come to him through the, the worst experiences in our lives and some of us don't. So, but does God call, God calls us all. We're all called. God wants, it's not his will that any should perish, but do, does our people even answering God's calling? No, sadly, most people aren't. And those that, that do answer, they show up and they're not even chosen and, or God doesn't choose everybody. He doesn't choose everybody because, because Because it's an issue of the heart. And so like I'm saying, people could be answering God, the call, and they come. But if they're not truly chosen because they're struggling with even believing God. Okay? And like everybody doesn't experience God in the same way. We all have different measures of faith. And so we experience God differently and God has a plan though, but my husband's calling me. So I'm going to leave this video here and I'll continue later. I love you, everybody. God bless you. Glory to God.